Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and once again, it's cast time. And then, um, and yeah, this isn't this is an early one for me. It's 10:45 p.m. right now. Uh, normally, I like to do these uh, somewhere between 11 to 11:30 p.m. But I think I have a I have quite a bit I have to cover this time around, so I figured it'd be a good time to get started early. So. And then for the music, um, this is gonna be the Surf Gnomes. I played the, I think I played um. Uh, I played their self-titled album on one of my other recent cast videos. Well, they came out with another uh, Transylvanian Grand Prix. So, so yeah, uh, let me go ahead and get that fired up. And um, it's a short 20-minute album, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, go ahead and loop it. Never fails. Somewhere in the transit, somewhere at some point while I was putting this cast together, I jacked up my headphone falling into a hundred. So, let's go ahead and get her started. Uh, well, for, for today's stream, um, for the most part, the usual, I did my uh, usual round of idle games. I started with a uh, Eileen to roll the gods, and then, and then I, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just but yeah, I started with Eileen to roll the gods, and then, um, I think, uh, I followed that up with, uh, Cookie Clicker for a little bit, uh, I think, I don't, I might have said it yesterday, I can't remember, but I, I learned a little thing or two on Cookie Clicker, um, uh, just a new, a new sort of kind of feature, I guess. But uh, just uh, piddled around with that for a little bit. So basically, I was actually on Cookie Clicker for longer than just five minutes. Um, but yeah, and then um, Idle Research, uh, fire that up afterwards. Uh, played that for I probably say about 15 minutes. It just it got a. I think it's reaching a point now where. I've, oh, I unlocked more. Uh, I unlock more features. I progressed far enough into the, into the game where, like, where I, I unlock them. So now, I'm on autopilot even more now. All I gotta do on there, check my potions, making sure, making sure uh, none of the varieties of them are being overconsumed. And already, thought it would go the distance, but nope. I uh, gotta get taking the headphones off so it's already starting to cut in and out I don't want to go too in detail on it right now but basically I have defective ear headphones that need to be retired the problem is is uh, there are no other headphones that I can find out there that have what these headphones have so I'm stuck with them but anyway um like I was like I was saying um but yeah I met up all I pretty much have to do on idle research now is just to Again, check the potions, making sure that uh, one type of potion's not not being overconsumed. I have to make sure uh, I'm not operating at a loss on it on them. But yeah, like I said, uh, I was on that for about 15 minutes or so. Um, and then after that, I switched over to Grim Clicker, but for some reason that I don't, I'm still trying to figure out it kind of reset my progress like uh, I like I said I have a I don't know what I did wrong but uh, it, it's it, it's not like it completely wiped my save or anything but uh I think I went to I think I switched over I think before I quit the game yesterday I switched over to uh, a different planet to a new planet so when you do that you pretty much start over uh, well, the problem is, is, uh, I hit a wall big time on this new planet, so I just went ahead and put the, just, uh, put the game on ice afterwards and just rely on, uh, offline earnings. Well, which were, uh, basically very meager. I was still stuck at the very same wall I started with. So, I decided to backpedal one, or backpedal to the previous planet. Now... I would have thought that I'd have still had all my buffs, all my abilities and stuff that I had just before I left this planet. But nope. It also decided to reset my progress here too, so 
I think I kind of got buckled somewhere on that. Like, there might have been a, a game glitch or something, or maybe a little error with a save file. I don't know. But, so, uh, probably until I can figure out what the hell went on with it, um, I'll probably just go ahead and give Grim Clicker a miss now. And hell, now that I think about it, this might have been one of the reasons why I hadn't played the game in a few years. I... I can't remember back. I can't remember details back then, but yeah, the chances are this might have been what had happened. You know, I might have might have moved to a or upgraded to a new planet, but as uh, I wasn't quite ready, as I again I was stuck at the very first encounter, couldn't progress past it. Um, uh, work back to the previous planet, just keep on going, but when I got back there, it's like I had nothing. So maybe that was why I hadn't. That was why I put uh, playing Grim Clicker a few years ago. Uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some water. Hold on. I forgot to say a few minutes ago too. The, um, the reason I gotta take my headphones off is uh, I have to be able to I have to be able to concentrate on talking without having to constantly jiggle the headphone wire in order to get it into just the perfect position so I can hear music in both ears. And not just one of them. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, after after giving up on that, I just fired up some idle champs. So I think I'll play that for the rest of the session. And then um, let me uh, I forgot to say this at the start of this segment, but uh, um, a, not a it was a not as good stream. Um, it wasn't a it wasn't a bad bad stream by any stretch, but I definitely had better. Like uh, what's been going on the past previous days. So, but yeah, I was, I think I was on like four, four and a half hours. Um, just had some bad sleep. I think I laid down at like 4 a.m. Woke up at 7 a.m. for some reason. Uh, tried laying, tried laying back down, but could only sleep for maybe two or three hours. Woke back up, but basically my sleep was very fragmented. I kept waking up for some odd reason so and uh unlike the uh unlike previous streams i actually started my stream at 2 p.m rather than um rather than the 12 30 1 p.m like i was starting them so, so for, for all intents and purposes i started this one a little bit later than normal so but anyway um back to idle champs uh just Played it uh, for a while. Did a, I think I did like two or three runs. So, but uh, during this time too, I think uh, did my usual. Uh, started off with some music. I think there, there were like a few albums that uh, I think I wasn't, I wasn't like madly in love with them or anything like that. But they're eh, they're okay. Um, one of my regulars didn't like them, so that just kind of. I just kind of motivated to move on to something else. Um, yeah, I started then um, eventually I just uh, switched on over to a Henry Rollins podcast. Um, Henry and his manager Heidi. I mean, for the longest time I thought uh, Heidi was like his secretary or something, or like his assistant. Kind of find out later <laughs> the roles are actually reversed. Like Heidi's his manager. So and she just, she, you know, because of all the of all the travels that Henry's done, all the people he's met over the years and all the experiences. She wanted to like do podcasts with him now, uh, detailing all this stuff that he's gone through. So, but uh, this time around, he, uh, they were talking about a guy named Hubert Selby Jr. Uh, he's a fairly famous author. Uh, he, he, he also had a host of medical problems. Like they had to, they had to remove some of his ribs. Um, they really had to fuck with his lungs. I, I don't, I think, I know, I think I, he had a, he had to deal with a collapsed lung, and they had, but like I said, I don't remember the exact details, but like I said, the, the doctors had to do some fiddling around with his lungs, which, uh, basically, it, it pretty much crippled him medically, so, it was around that time that he decided to take up writing, I think, uh, but yeah, um, he is, he was the author of, uh, one of my favorite books, Last Exit to Brooklyn, it's like a very, very, very dark book. So, in... 
I think it's um, it's kind of opposite of a lot of other books that I've read. But like I said, this is um, Last Exit. It's it's pretty much a dark and brooding. It's all you know, grim, gritty uh, stories. Uh, I think I think the whole book was set in New York. So yeah, there's a he wrote another. He wrote another book called Requiem for a Dream. Um, I think I got maybe like one or two chapters. I put it down for some reason. I can't remember. It was like many years ago. Um, same thing with The Room. I actually like The Room, but again, I think I read maybe the first few chapters. And then again, I put that book down for some reason that I can't remember. I mean... Like Requiem, um, I tried reading it like many years ago, so, but yeah, um, but during this podcast, just Henry's uh, recounting all of his experiences with this guy, his, all the things they did together and stuff like that, so it was a pretty good podcast, so it, but it, you know, it kind of, you know, kind of unlike some of the other podcasts I've, uh, I've checked out of his where he meets, I can't remember names right off the top of my head right now, but you know where he he meets people that I don't really give two shits about. Um, RuPaul was one of them. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, I am no homo or anything like that, or I'm not anti drag queen. I mean, I'm I'm not anti LGBTQ, and there are some more letters added onto that. I can't remember, but you know, but again, RuPaul, he's the kind of part you just goes over my head you know just, just kind of thing goes in one ear and out the other I think he had I think RuPaul had a song like was it like word work it girl or something like that I heard it like once or twice didn't do anything for me so but yeah I mean you know but those kind of those kind of podcasts I mean where he hangs out with people that I don't I don't really care much for Um, and then, um, after that, I, I also, uh, I tried watching another, uh, another podcast called Champions of Psychology. It's, um, it's an Idol Champs podcast, which is probably also one of the reasons why, uh, Idol Champs is my favorite idol game. When it doesn't crash my computer, that is. Which, kind of, kind of an aside, uh, I've been having some great luck for the past week, week and a half. Every time I start it up, it works. So, but anyway, um... But yeah, it's one of my... Because no other idol game I can think of has this kind of content. You know, I mean, Cookie Clicker is just... All they do is Cookie Clicker, and that's it. The most you might get is maybe a, an HR Geiger reference or something. But they don't they don't branch out any farther than that. Um, idol Research, Idol in the World of Gods. I mean, yeah, most of those idol games, um, all they do is just the idol game, and that's it. They don't branch out into other stuff. Um, the only other game I could, the only other idol game I could think of where they might, they, there might be a little bit of variety is uh, NGU Idol, which, which I to this day I'm still forgetting to play it. Um, it's just it's just one of those games that snuck that's snuck under the radar here lately. But but yeah, I know uh, NGU Idol. I think they have a a few other games out there actually. I, actually, I take that back. Um, Idling the Rule of Gods, uh, they have another idol game, like Idol Chef Emperor or something like that. But, I mean, you kind of get the idea, though. I mean, they're not doing... None of these uh, guys making idol, idol games aren't doing podcasts like Idol Champs is. Um, they're not, you know, CNE Games, I think the company is called, but, I mean... Most other idol games, they're not doing what CNE Games does and trying to get a Dungeons and Dragons license. You know, you know, you know, you know, putting on podcasts like this. So, so yeah. Anyway, um, but I tried uh getting back or getting back to the subject. Um, I tried uh tried checking out the podcast, but they're too quiet. 
like they need to turn their mic volumes up or something um because i had the volume i had the twitch volume all the way to the max i had um i had my own volume all the way up to the max that i could still barely hear them i had a i had to crank up the uh on my obs sound mixer i had to jack up the um the the audio volume on that in the hopes that, that uh, any of my viewers can hear them. So. But um, the the stuff, in, in order for me to barely hear them though, I basically had to drop everything else I did and actually focus on trying to listen to them, you know, trying not to have any distracting sounds of, you know, like me, like hitting keys and stuff. So. But, uh, and now that I think about it, of the Henry and Heidi podcast I have the same problem with too but not as not as severe I mean I gotta I gotta jack up the YouTube volume and my own volume just to be able to hear them but at least in doing that I can I can hear them so but yeah um the but the very little of uh, uh, champions of psychology that I could hear good stuff so, it's pretty uh, pretty good stuff to listen to from what little I could, but what little I could have listened to. I'm trying to think, there was something else I was wanting to say too. There was, um, and towards the end of the stream, um, one of my regulars came on. He recommended I listen to this, uh, listen to this, uh, one, one band, or this one band, like, Lorna, something, but they're like, uh, I think it's like Deathcore Metal or something like that. I can't remember the exact name, but, uh, this guy did, this, the lead vocalist did a one take. I'm like, damn, this is pretty good stuff. I mean, but, but on the other hand, too, Overall, this the black metal genre, I'm I'm kind of burnt on. So, but it's still I gotta hand it to Lorna, whatever Lorna Horn or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, like I said, it's just some pretty awesome vocals, though. So, but I I could probably chase I could probably chase it down, chase down what I'm looking for, but I don't have the time right now. I still have quite a bit to talk about, so. That'll do it for that. And then this time, I don't, for pinball, I don't have much to talk about. I tried firing up FX3, and it crashed. So, but, uh, when I looked at the, uh, looking at the tables, it's a very Star Wars heavy themed matchup week. Um, Safe Cracker is one of them, but it's the, that table is ass when it comes to a three minute time limit. Um, in the table's back class, there's a board game that you, I, I don't, I, I'm, I don't want to say that you can play, um, as much as you want to say you're forced to play. You know, you make, you know, you make these certain shots, and then eventually you get forced to do this board mode. It kind of, it kind of plays like the board game, sorry, but it's, it's a game that's inside the back class. You know, you roll, you know, you roll your dice and you move ahead some odd space, whatever. But yeah, that eats up a lot of time for next to no benefit at all. So, so I'll be playing that table only one time and that's it. But the, um, the other Star Wars tables, um, the, the Boba Fett table, it's, it's not a difficult table. But I think it is pretty difficult to get a decent score on. So, and then the, um, there's a Han Solo table. And if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's actually one of my favorite tables in FX3. So, and then Return of the Jedi. Um, it's a, another good table. It's, it's a fairly easy table. Um, I have beaten high scores on it before. But uh, it's, it's one of those where you basically have to start a mode. And then you have to make the required flashy shots and you have to hit the you have to hit your active double score boost at just the right time. 
to get the most score out of those shots. So I'm gonna take out a drink of water. So yeah, and then uh, pinball arcade. Um, I don't. If FX3 doesn't work, then pinball arcade's not gonna work either. So I'll have to try maybe tomorrow. But I'll, if I remember to, I'll talk more about it later. Otherwise, that's that on that. We also want you guys to play on the ending of the festival. And then, um, one other channel I checked out recently, um, uh, it was something that came up on my YouTube recommendations. I, I think I actually li watched a video or two from this guy, Adam something. Um, I think it was like a, probably a few years ago, but, but yeah, one of their, um, one of his videos popped up on my YouTube recommendations, so I figured I'd give it a, go ahead and give it a watch, and like, hey, this is actually some pretty good stuff. Um, I was kind of wondering why I didn't, I didn't check this guy out before, um, but yeah, for those that don't know, um, Adam something, um, he's, a. Uh, I think he's a, either a city planner and or a civil engineer but uh kind of kind of like the uh the not just bikes channel that i'll sometimes talk about on here he you know he's, he's basically he's pretty critical on uh on today's infrastructure you know how bad it is especially in my country so yeah but um but yeah i checked out uh checked out a few of his videos um but uh, one, one thing that did occur to me that uh, after listening to this guy for one for a while, um, one, he's Hungarian. Uh, that's over in like east, the eastern, southeastern part of Europe. But yeah, he's Hungarian. But it just kind of occurred to me that he he sounds almost like Z Frank, like he the guy that does all the uh, true facts about animals and stuff like that. He sounds almost exactly like him. So I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, one big drawback. And I think this is probably what uh what put me off on this guy a few years ago, is he, he, when it comes to um when it comes to recording his audio his dialogue, he has a, a very Michael Bay style of editing. You know, I mean, it's 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 like that. Uh, there's like absolutely no pauses in any of the edits. It's like just one big uh, big old run on sense. It just starts and it just continues on and on and on. On he doesn't like, he doesn't like take a breather or anything. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You know, and anything like that. It just you know it just it just it, it's like it just says like one continuous sentence. It only like one continuous paragraph. It just goes on like this for the whole entire video. It's almost like he does like it, there's almost like this text to speech quality that he has to it. It just gets very hard on the ears after a while. I could only run, I could only listen to maybe like a, a, maybe one video at the most at a time, and then I have to take a break because he goes on and on like that. You know, it just. But um, I've seen uh, many other content creators. They have the same problem. It's they. They don't. They don't have an. You know. It's like. It's like they push record on their. They push record on their computer say their sentence and then save it you know and then push record on their push record on their computer again and then say the next part of their script and then you know turn the you know turn the record off push the record button again say the next sentence in their script and then so on and so forth and they take all these sentences and they kind of they kind of glue them together so like i said it just it's got this real text to speech quality to it So, but like I said, he, it's a great channel, um, and um, I did catch a little tiny bit of a, I think he did a, he did a debate about was Russia justified in the Ukrainian invasion or something like that. Um, come to find out later that, kind of like the channel Second Thought, he's a lefty. Um, he's a, I think he's a left wing, I think he might be a socialist as well. So I... Kind of a bit of a, a bit of a bonus. I'm not a, I'm not a socialist, or, or I'm not a socialist myself, but I, I tend to, I tend to like to, I tend to like their opinions, 
more than I do the right wing uh, conservative guys. So I think I think last um, when I took a political compass test some time ago, it came up Nelson Mandela, for for what it's worth. No, oh, I just remembered. I did a. It was an eight values political test I took. Oh. I think it came up as libertarian socialist. So I guess based on that, I'm a so I'm based on that alone. I'm a socialist, but it, I don't go running around and hey man, people need to adopt socialism in their in their lives or something like that. I sure as hell don't do that. I think if somebody was to ask me, so where do you stand on the political spectrum? Uh, Nelson Mandela? Or, you know, something like that. I wouldn't just, I'm a socialist, pure and true, or anything like that. No, no, no. So, but, but like I said, um, it, it kind of a, kind of a little bonus. I think, uh, Adam something, he's, I think he's a left-leaning socialist. So. But, uh, but kind of going back to what I was originally talking about, his, his big issue is just, he doesn't just talk. You know, he doesn't talk, he just... He just records sentences and then pastes them all together. So, again, kind of a quickie recap review. He has a real text-to-speech quality to him. You know, I guess, um... And I guess, um, one channel that he does, uh... He has paid homage to before. Um, you can say what you want about, uh, Do Not Eat. Um, just some, a lot, I think some people out there, they, I can't remember exact opinions of them, but they are, they, they're non complimentary like, it's like a, it's like a Snuffleupagus moved to Philadelphia and became an engineer. So he's, he's slower paced, and he, but on the upside, he actually speaks, he talks. I mean, you can't, you know. You can't accuse him of using a using text to speech dialogue like you could with Adam something. So, but anyway, um, there's something else I was wanting to say about that too. But yeah, um, do not eat though. Uh, he actually, um, kind of a side note, he's actually one of my one of the one of my biggest inspirations in me uh, doing this kind of content, like these cast videos, because. Unlike Adam something, he has a very simplistic um, video creation style. He doesn't he doesn't use he doesn't use constant edits. I mean, the style that he has, I I would I I could actually sit back and watch the whole thing. You know, I'm watching it the whole time. I'm like, I could do that. So. And yet, uh, Do Not Eat is actually a pretty popular channel, too, just like Adam something. So, yeah, like I said, um, just check that out. Um, I might actually watch a few more videos here, but again, I'm, I can only tolerate maybe one at a time, and then I gotta go up and, I gotta go up and give my ears some relief. Otherwise, that'll do it for that. Um, and then, um, then, uh, Jessica Wildfire came out with a new article. Uh, Thanos was right, by the way. I don't, I know next to nothing about the, Mar about the, uh, the Marvel Avenger universe or whatever. Um, and I, I don't care to it just from the from the little footage I've seen in various places I a little too heavy on the CGI I just I don't get into that at all so so um but one thing the only limited knowledge I have about about uh, Marvel and Avengers is there I don't know on pinball FX3 they got um they have various Avengers table tables um Age of Ultron um there's like another oh god 
God, there was there was a table on there. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, or I forget the name of the table with Thanos is in it. Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that's what it is. Um, it's but but Thanos is uh, Thanos is on this table. But like I said, my my knowledge of this whole universe is very scant. So, but one thing I did do, um, before I, I think I got a paragraph or two into this Jessica Wildfire article. Um, I what I one thing I did do is I just went ahead and uh, I checked out the um, Analyzing Evil. It's a video series. They go over villains and stuff. Um, I watched most of the video on um, how Thanos is and stuff. So just to give me some kind of context before reading this article. Oh, damn. Photo by NASA. Uh, adventure movies are fun. Into a plot point, creating the ultimate villain. Okay, and I'm... And I'm pretty sure they've probably done this... They've probably done this kind of thing to... To, like, um... To people... To, to people they hate. Or to people they're trying to shut down. They, um... It seems they try to make up. Uh, they made Thanos into. I don't want to say an anti-hero, but I guess maybe somebody with a uh, Lancelot syndrome. Uh, that's somebody who is trying to do some good in the world, but ends up uh, ends up uh, doing harm instead. Thinks he's helping the world, but he winds up hurting, hurting, hurting people instead. So. So yeah, it, it seems like um, they basically made him out to be the bad guy. Now, again, from the um, analyzing evil video I saw, they're um, his on his home planet, um, overconsumption is becoming a big issue. Just um, overpopulation. So he wanted to do something about that. He wanted to. He wanted to wanted to rectify this problem but he went at it the wrong way by just um by just flat out genociding people so like like i said he it sounds like he's got lance a lot syndrome where he's you know trying to help the world but he's gonna wind up destroying it in the process or he's gonna wind up destroying it instead someone has to check it okay so, so it sounds like um. Oh, I just I, there was a word there was a word I had for this straw man. So they're so the powers of fear are basically making Thanos out to be they're making him into a straw man. You know just. Yeah, they're just trying to... They don't deal with the real problem. Yeah, and instead of, like, trying to... Instead of trying to fix their own... It, trying to fix their own internal issue, they're just gonna... Okay, so it might have almost been a bad call doing this part. I, mean, I had some stuff in my mind that I wanted to say about this, but... Oh, it all up and left me. That else is never the bad guy, is I think. That almost kind of goes back to what I said a few moments ago. They're making them out to be the straw man. They try to dissuade people from the real problem. And then that that was something I was thinking of too. I know um. I think the I think it was um the video was on a channel was on the second thought channel um but uh, a lot of times uh military contractors um military powers that be um I think uh for these for Hollywood to make these kind of movies they have I think they have to actually get permission 
from the armed forces in order to make them. Like, they, they're something like they're required to bring military people on as consultants and stuff. So, so yeah, so basically, uh, I'll, I'll say military meddling for lack of a better, lack of a better phrase. So I'm thinking maybe God, I wish I wish I knew exactly how that what was in that video. Like maybe um maybe the armed forces was gonna would offer to would pay would pay part of the production cost to make this movie. So then but then the military, they're gonna have they're gonna have to allow them to have their own have their own input. So I'm gonna take another drink of water. But uh, once again, too, I, I've never watched any of these Marvel movies, so I don't, I have no idea exactly what Thanos is saying. So I have no idea what the superheroes are saying, and nor do I really care to. Like I said, I don't. The whole, just not a fan of the whole thing. Basically, they're they're making climate activists out to be the bad guys. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to paint a bad picture of them. No, nobody's saying we need to indiscriminately murder half the population of Earth. That's yeah. That's that's uh, I guess that's what Thanos is trying to do. He's trying to like genocide like 50 percent of the population chosen at random. We're saying stop having so many babies, stop consuming so much, stop flying everywhere. And this kind of a side note: uh, do not eat. And um, Adam, everything they were all saying the same thing. One thing these um, guys like Elon Musk and uh, all these guys that are coming up with different different transit ideas, it's they're all it's they're all they're all dead set on they're all dead set on saying that these are not trains. Like they have this anti-train mentality. When really, when you look at when you look at what they are, like the hyperloop, the loop, um, the dugout loop, etc., they're they have this uh, real fixation on anti-train. Nope, these aren't trains. These aren't anything like trains. So I kind of. Fucking magic. That's what it's called. Um. Do not eat hat. On one of his videos, do not eat mentions it. It's called. It's an engineering te term called AMFM, where AM is actual machines, FM is fucking magic. That's. I'm. I'm seeing that here. It, stop flying, everyone. It's a fucking magic scheme. Do you know the economy. And this is a new one. I've never heard of this. Although I can kind of see it though. Growth at any cost. Yeah. No. Ask any environmental science. Group. The planet can't support eight billion of us. We might support a few billion at max. We're not going to innovate our way. We have to grow our way out of it. We took that basic science and twisted it into something that varies. But and I think this is probably as far as I got when I first when I first read this. So this is totally virgin territory to me. So yeah, took the basic science, and again, they basically made him out to be the bad guys. Thanos, really, his name comes from the Greek Thanatos, spirit of death and oblivion, he's nature. Um, and um, for, for what it's worth, when I was watching this Analyzing Evil video, he was, uh, when Thanos came up with this idea, you know, I'm trying to help the universe, by uh, calling like 50% of the whole population, it's it actually kind of parallels to to I believe the forestry industry, you know, like national parks, Yellowstone National Parks, other 
other parks that have a lot of force. Um, I think one of the techniques they do um, is they actually intentionally start wildfires. Or they're controlled, yeah, they're controlled forest fires. Intentionally burning down some of the forest to make space, you know, to... I forget the actual actual reason, but it's to... How can it, to create, you must destroy, if that makes any sense at all. But, but yeah, I remember, I remember uh, seeing that somewhere. Like, these, uh, I guess, park rangers or whatever that are running all these national parks, they do control wildfires. Or, let me, that sounds like a contradiction. Uh, controlled forest fires. Like, intentionally burning down, like, some of the trees to give maybe the young ones a chance to grow. So, but when I, when I saw this part of the video, this is immediately what I thought. I'll bet this is, um, Thanos, Thanos' idea was, was not unlike something like this. Maybe he's thinking the same thing. You know, killing off half the population. You know, to, you know, killing off 50% of it to allow the other 50% to grow or something. I mean, it's flawed to be sure, but I, it's... It, it's flawed to be sure, but it's, uh, it's, actually, it's nothing, it's, it's not original. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's the inevitable result of humanity's inaction. But, again, I haven't heard a word of dialogue from these guys, so I'm pretty much going to have to go with Jessica on this. That, near the Yetis, I am inevitable. Okay, yup. A lot of climate scientists are saying the same thing too. You know, the lifestyle we have is unsustainable. It does ain't keep Okay. But again, I gotta I gotta defer to Jessica on this. Like I said, I've never seen any of these movies. He doesn't mind if every living creature in the universe hates him. Yeah, just like nature. Nature don't care about your feelings. Sacrifices everything. He doesn't even keep the infinity stones which he could have been used to indulge his wildest fantasies. He destroys them, permanently disables himself in the process. Yup. So the movies go out of their unsympathetic. They turn him into a tyrant and abuse a father. Yup. But yeah, I'm, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the movers and shakers. I mean, hell, um, I'm pretty sure people like Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King. I think the powers that be were trying to make these guys out to be the bad guys. Although, stupidly, they. Yeah, stupidly, both of them, they just outright assassinated them. Basically, they just made martyrs out of them. I mean, that just rallied even more people to their cause. So, they end up shooting themselves in the foot in the process. So, I think uh, these days, they've gotten a lot smarter about it. I think um, the band Devo kind of talked about that too. Um, I think I read an interview with them. Like they did some interview like back in the 2000s. I think it was with The Onion. They said the same thing. Um, the uh, the powers that be, you know, they they got wise. You know, instead of just you know blowing away the main mover and shaker, you know, instead of quelling the rebellion, market it. You know, kind of, I think the same thing kind of happened to Rage Against the Machine, too. Um, you know, they're anti-capitalist and all that, but I think, the, the again, the powers that be, you know, instead of just blowing away the lead singer, which would just would just made a martyr out of him, instead, send MTV over there to cover the, cover the concert. You know, you know make, them, make them out to be the sellout and stuff. Or, I, uh, let me, or an even bigger sellout than they already were. I mean, 
they're already kind of contradicting themselves. I think they're, you know, selling tickets, selling t-shirts and stuff, selling merch. But, you know, I, I mean, technically, it's technically, again, they're, they're contradicting themselves. They're being hypocritical, but on the other hand, too, they got to make money somehow to keep the thing going. Because they can't do it for free. So, but anyway, getting back on subject. Um, but like I said, I'd have to take her word for it. I have no intention of watching any of these movies. <laughs> Just thought of this, yeah. Plus, I mean... And plus, it's also a concept that, uh... It's a concept that I've been hearing ever since I was a kid, back in the 70s. And it probably goes back even farther than that. Population control. I mean... I mean, that being... They're... They're critiquing Thanos for wanting to get rid of half the world's population, but what, what the hell do you think the higher powers of be are doing? I mean... But like I said, the, the concept of population control is a very old one. I think it goes back even farther than me. It's arguably far more humane than what's with famines or plagues, famines, droughts, and endless wars, in short oblivion. And once again, it kind of goes back to what I said about five or so minutes ago. This is almost like uh, like park rangers doing a controlled uh, controlled forest fire. You, you burn off some of the trees, you know, to allow the other ones to grow. You know, to maybe to prevent maybe to prevent unexpected forest fires in the future. Like, but like I said, I'm not a like I said, I just I I saw it in some video some odd years ago. Something like, but something like that, you know, doing controlled wire powers or wildfires to maybe prevent unexpected wildfires from happening in the future. But it looks like, um, it looks like I'm not even halfway to, not even halfway through the article. And it's been about 47 minutes, so I'll probably be winding it down soon. Okay, so now we're going to see the other side, but like I said, sorry to sound like a broken record, but I've never watched any of these shows, nor do I intend to. The Avengers are the bad guys. We got an immortal job with Special Hammer. <laughs> I don't... I'm guessing Thor mooching, mooching off of Odin, but... I'm guessing. And take it another drink of water. I'm really talking myself horpers here. He turns himself into an uncontrolled monster. So yeah, we got Thanos and the spring chickens in, basically. Or I should say the wannabe spring chickens. We got a soldier jacked up on steroids. He's the only one with half a conscience. I'm guessing uh, Captain America. Oh, and uh, I'm guessing Incredible Hulk. We got a handful of assassins with so much innocent blood. I have no idea. Loki. <laughs> Loki explains all of it. We see it, Tony Stark. Um, all the villains always speak the hardest truth. I have no idea who Whiplash is. Don't know. He's the ultimate tech bro optimist. Okay, that. So, I'm guessing based on this, he's basically Joe Rogan, but with an iron suit. Making advanced weapons to use on poor people. That literally blow up in his face. What does he do? Again, I don't... I don't know what poor people he'd be using these on. He turns himself into a warfare technology. He won't share it with anyone either. He goes around bragging. I privatized him. Oh, <laughs> God. Give me a break. Of course, Tony's for to cut it. He has to make a bunch of robots that look exactly like him. He creates an artificial intelligence and extends it. Replace humanity with robots. 
Yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty common trope right there. Tony Stark is not a good guy. He's content living all his own fantasies. Daddy attracted women at the expense of the planet. He's the ultimate tech bro. Like I said before, he's guess he's Joe Rogan with an iron suit. Incrementalism. Um, the book Strong Towns, uh, one of my favorite books. This, based on that, um, incrementalism is actually a good thing. You know, don't. I mean, it's probably uh, apples and oranges, but yeah, it. You don't want to go. You only want a uh, oh, hard to go. You mostly want stability and only a little bit of expansion. So I think that's what he meant by incrementalism. But anyway, it's, I'm kind of going off subject on that. So over radical solutions that threaten his profits, high risk, high reward. Oh. The Avengers figure out time travel to gather up all the infinite. And um, Analyzing Evil talks about this too. They gather up all the infinity stones. They could have used all that infinite power to prevent the overpopulation. Overpopulation of the universe in the first place. Create more resources for everyone. The vile eye talked about this. The, the, guy who, the guy who narrates Analyzing Evil. But yeah, he was talking about this too. But he was saying... Thanos could have done this. So, it looks like uh, the Vile Eye left this part out then. Like I said, when, on that video, he was saying uh, Thanos could have done any of this, but instead, he decided to go ahead and embark on his genocidal crusade anyway. So, I'm pretty sure that was probably a Hollywood thing. More resources. stones to instantly bring back all the people which basically undid all his hard work double the population suddenly double the population of a species much less humans suddenly showing up on this planet yup her and I were thinking exactly the same thing you gotta feed and clothe all those people now Assassins, androids, sarcastic wizards. Oh, Doctor Strange. Which is who accidentally blow up buildings and enslave entire towns. No idea who she is. In the classical tradition, heroes are not good things. Um, there was a website that I saw many years ago called Superman is a Dick. But yeah, there's a lot of instances of Superman being a dick in that website. So, yeah. And, and it wasn't restricted to just uh, Superman. Batman, Robin, damn near every superhero you could think of. They've done some pretty shady shit in the past. Learning the right lessons. They're just chowing down on popcorn soaking all in. Sir, no. Okay, again, again, I, I haven't, I've never seen any of these movies, so I'll have to rely on her on this. And I'm pretty sure um, this part here is intentional. 
They don't want to give uh, the audience any reason at all to think that Thanos might actually be a good guy. So, yeah. They had to write all of his good qualities out of the script. Or not all, but most of them. He understands the ecosystems. He's seen countless worlds collapse under their own weight. Even that, yup. Analyzing evil had this as well. The reason why he embarked on his crusade was because uh, his planet was turning to shit. I mean, again, uh, his planet had a problem with uh, overpopulation and overconsumption. So, he tries to warn Tony, he doesn't listen. Again, I no idea. Thanos is right. He isn't the bad guy. Heroes are such idiots. Well, that well, looks like I managed to read the whole thing, so. But yeah, I've spent an unusually long amount of time on this article. I hope it helped. But otherwise, um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. And, um, but yeah, I'll, I think I've said all the things that I wanted to say. So, And then one more thing I need to get out of the way. And I'll need to talk. I'll probably talk more about this uh, on tomorrow's stream. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm back at work. I'm back at work starting tomorrow. And I'm also back to my old schedule now. Uh, 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. So probably more than past weeks. Um, again, I'm working 10 hour shifts here, so I'm going to be even more beat up and tore up when I get home from work. So Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, um, those, those streams are going to be much more tentative now. So again, more than past weeks, I'm probably going to be even less likely to actually do a stream. I, I'm never, I'll never say never, but again, just... It's, it's going to be probably much more likely that I'm probably not going to have the energy or my body might be too hurting or whatever to actually get a stream going. So even even though I'm streaming idle games or even though I'm streaming idle games these days that, yeah, I just as soon as sleep in. So, or let me phrase that. I'm more likely to just rather sleep in instead of streaming. But otherwise, um, once again, that's going to do it for me, everybody. So, But thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me. I appreciate that. Always do. And um, so once again, this is going to be my last cast for the week. So you won't be hearing from me again until probably Sunday morning. So, But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And I'll see you all next time.